Uh, Nicole is a contributing editor of the City Journal. She is a chartered financial analyst, that's a CFA, and you know, she, her undergraduate degree was in English. And to get a CFA, I've been an investment banker for 37 years, and that is three years worth of exams to get through that. I wouldn't dare take them. So I was very impressed to learn today that she is a chartered financial analyst. Her recent book is After the Fall, Saving Capitalism from Wall Street and Washington. Uh, Nicole is a expert in municipal finance. Uh, the first 15 years that I was in the investment banking industry, my field was municipal finance. I was a municipal bond underwriter, a municipal bond trader, a municipal bond analyst. Uh, I wrote a book called The Guidebook to Municipal Bonds with Joe Mizak, who then was the editor-in-chief of the Daily Bond Buyer. And what the City Journal does and what Nicole does is zero in on certain problems we're facing. And Nicole, uh, I just canonized you. You're, you've joined us? Yes, I'm here. How, how are you, George? All right, very good. I'm glad you get on us. And I just canonized you and the work you're doing. Well, thanks for inviting me on. My pleasure. And Nicole wrote a terrific piece for the City Journal, which you can find out in their website, What to Do When You're Broke. New York's insolvent municipalities can learn from California's bankrupt ones. Before we get into the meat of that, that article of yours, which I, I found outstanding, Thank you. I wanted to ask you your opinion on a decision that came down yesterday and the impact it may have on Detroit and Harrisburg and cities in New York, namely the San Bernardino, which filed bankruptcy out in California a while back, yep. wins eligi eligi eligibility for bankruptcy. So a judge ruled that they are eligible for bankruptcy what does this mean, and what do you think the impact it's going to have on us nationally? Well, it means two things. One, bankruptcy is not a quick fix for your town or city. So if you're a voter citizen of some place that is fiscally distressed, which includes a lot of places, including a good deal of New York, and you're thinking, well, we can just declare bankruptcy if things get too bad, it's taken almost a year for San Bernardino to say it wants to go bankrupt uh, la last summer uh, to be able to actually get eligibility for bankruptcy. And it'll be at least another year before they figure out what they can cut in bankruptcy. So it's not a quick fix. Sometimes it may be necessary, but it's, it's not a painless solution to fiscal problems that have been years and decades in the making. The second thing is a really a lesson for public sector workers and retirees. Pensions are not sacrosanct. We've heard that the conventional wisdom is that because many state constitutions, including California, protect pension benefits from being diminished, no public sector worker ever has to worry about his or her pension benefits. But yet San Bernardino has not been paying their pension payments to the state pension fund for nearly a year. Uh, the state pension fund, CalPERS, has vociferously objected to this. They said that the city should not be able to go bankrupt because they are not allowed to use bankruptcy to try to get out of these pension benefits. And the judge agreed with the city that this is not an eligibility issue, that they've got to work this out later. So some uncertainty that didn't exist a year ago for public sector workers and retirees. Well, on the one hand, you're right. It can be a difficult road in bankruptcy. On the other side of the coin in New York, when New York City went broke back in 1975, the state, instead of taking it through bankruptcy, the state established a financial control board, which was chaired by the governor and key state elected officials and, and the mayor of New York. And that helped straighten out the city of New York to refinance its debt. But as you point out in your piece, rightly so, that was based on short-term debt that had to be resolved, while the issues today with troubled municipalities. Now, in the spirit of full disclosure, I should point out that I'm a director of the Nassau Interim Finance Authority, which is the oversight board that is now in control, control period in Nassau County. Nassau County is about the third or fourth richest county in the nation, basically shot itself in the head financially uh, by giving away overly generous contracts and spending and taxing for decades and getting into a great deal of problems. But you're somewhat critical of control boards as well and even the knife of one, and I may agree with your analysis of the criticism of the board I'm on. Can you explain why you don't think control boards are necessarily the answer to trouble, if, troubling municipalities in New York or anywhere else at this point in time? Sure. Control board can be a good thing, a bad thing, or a neutral thing. 
it's just a tool. It depends what the politicians want to do with that tool. And unfortunately for, for, for New Yorkers, because it is, it is a creation of the state, it's really up to state politicians, including the governor and state lawmakers, state legislative leaders, to decide, do we want to use this control board to do what needs to be done, or do we want to use it to pretend we're doing what needs to be done and make everyone feel better, but just push the problems a few years later down the road? Unfortunately, you go back 13 years when Nassau needed this rescue, then Governor Pataki, I know you, you wrote a whole book about him. A he critical book, I might add, a very critical uh, book. He, 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 he chose to, in, he and the state legislature chose to put on a control board, but not give it the tools that it needed to do what it needed to do. You know, they, they couldn't threaten bankruptcy, and so they had no leverage to say, to the unions, you've got to open up these contracts. You've got to give something back on health benefits. The state, which controls pensions, didn't take this as an opportunity to say, maybe we've got to rethink how much local governments pay for their employees' pensions. And so the control board could do certain things, you know, like freeze wages, uh, approve new contracts, and you know these these things are good. But on the big picture items, what to do about current contracts that are already signed, what to do about expired contracts, because the state law says that once a contract is expired, provisions including wages and health benefits stay, so there's no incentive for workers to ever sign a contract that's worse than the contract they hide before. The control board was not allowed to handle any of these things, and fast forward 13 years, NASA is no better than it was back then, and, and in many ways the, worse. Uh, uh, part of your formula, I think, is correct on your criticism of, of control boards, but there's another side of the coin. Back in 1970, January 1978, when Ed Koch became mayor of New York, and I had this conversation with the late mayor, he said to me that he went to the control board and said, hey, what does it take for me to get rid of you guys? I, I want to be the mayor. I don't want people looking over my shoulder all the time. So uh, what do I need to do? And they said, well, you've got to balance under GAP budget four years in a row. Uh, here's some of the things you're going to have to do to achieve that end, and we don't want to see with raising of taxes. And Ed Koch went and did exactly that. And four years later, four years of balanced budgets under generally accepted accounting principles, which very few municipalities do, as you know, Nicole, uh, the control board went out of a control period, and he was able to be the mayor of the city of New York. What we're facing today is what Ed Koch had, many politicians don't have, namely to will to govern. Yep. And so even in Nassau County, we've had to deal that where the elected officials say, we don't want to deal with this, and keep on putting it off and tap dancing and pretending they're having balanced budgets by putting off paying bills or funding it with long-term debt. So it's a very difficult issue when politicians are don't have the guts to govern because they have to make some tough decisions. So they try to blame NIFA, the Nassau Interim Finance Theory, the control board for many of their woes, while in the meantime they're taking advantage of the positive powers we have, like a wage freeze. So do you see in looking at governments that are on the brink that the politicians themselves are just frozen and don't have the guts to do what has to be done? Oh, sure, especially in New York, because you've got local politicians of both parties who were able to say, look, it's not our fault, it's the state's fault, and you, you've got the state that can say the opposite. Now, you know, a, a good deal of local government's problems are the state mandates, things like pensions, things like Medicaid, but for many, many years, local leaders were happy to go along with these things because it gets them union votes, it gets them contractor contributions from people who want to run you know, everything from nursing homes to bus services. And so you have both sides blaming the other side. Not a productive situation. And frankly, if something isn't done by the governor, right, by Governor Cuomo, uh, more substantively at the state level, we will start to see local governments push back and say, you know, look, we, we can't handle these, these mandates anymore, because at this point, there's no place else 
for the problems to go. You can't send them another half decade, another decade into the future. You know, local governments are really cutting back police, cutting back fire services. People are leaving because property taxes are are going up too much in places like Long Island, and you know, they voters really want answers this time around. And if they're not going to get them from the state government, they can't help but look and see what's going on in California. You know, will cities and towns start to look at municipal bankruptcy? You know, I, I wouldn't say that th- th- this is something that's absolutely going to happen, but it is an option there. You can't help but look and see Stockton, Vallejo, San, San Bernardino also having to deal with some of these state mandates and taking this choice to try to get rid of some of them through municipal bankruptcy. Nicole, I want to thank you for joining us today. It's a depressing picture, but uh, I recommend to everyone that you read Nicole's piece, What to Do When You're Broke, New York's Insolvent Municipalities Could Learn from California's Bankrupt Ones. Nicole, thanks for joining us today. Thank you, George. Have a nice weekend. You too. Bye-bye. All righty. I'm George Mall, and this is Steve Malsberg's show on Newsmax TV. We'll be back in a couple of minutes.